welcome to The Gadget Show. Now, regular viewers of our little programme will know that I'm a bit of a fan of the world of Apple. My phone is an iPhone, my laptop is a MacBook. In fact, I find it hard to walk past a fruit bowl and not take a bite out of an apple just to make it look <laughs> right. Now, I can also see the attraction of beautifully designed Apple products. However, I do think that Jason's obsession has gone a little bit too far. So, my challenge this week is to take this poor fixated wretch <laughs> to an undisclosed high security location and open up his eyes beyond the world of Steve Jobs and his world of shininess. This behind the scenes filming shows just how addicted Jason is. He's always cradling his iPhone and even in an office full of computers, he'd rather the user's MacBook. Right, let's get straight down to business. The business of this week's challenge, in which I face the job of convincing him <laughs> that apples are not the only tech fruit. And to be honest, the last part of the challenge was always going to be the most tricky, as I had to convince him to put aside... No. Give it to me no. now. To put aside Never. his... Will he give me... Just give it to me. Give me Never. that. Put aside your MacBook. No. Give it to Move me. Away from What's that stupid MacBook. voice you're doing? Just it's like a, it's a voice from the grave saying there is some evil spirit that will befall you if you grab my book of Mac. Give it to me. Get up it. Give oh, it to me. Never. I will never succumb. Cause in session. State your case. Just why is this MacBook so good? Oh, uh, <clears throat> OK, my honour, your lord, uh, my love, thank you. It's milled out of a solid piece of aluminium. So it's a lump of metal? Yeah, it's, it's a lump of metal, but it's aluminium metal. So it's very light and it's very strong. And because it's got no joins around these sorts of areas where it gets a lot of use, you know, it's not going to crack or, or break. It's also got, can you see there's a glowing light there? Yeah? Okay, that's the metal glowing. They've milled it thin at that point so that the light comes through the metal. Yeah, well, that's all very well. But what about attention to cost? I offer you Exhibit A, the cheapest MacBook on the market, £719. You can't argue with the fact that you can get a better spec PC for about half the price of that. Sometimes, my darling, you can't put too much emphasis on pleasure. I get a lot of pleasure from typing. This is all about your typing, is it? You better believe it. I mean, there is not a laptop on the market, in my opinion, that is as lovely to type on as this. I would say I can type quicker and more efficiently on this keyboard than on any other laptop I've ever used. I feel a challenge coming on. If I can find you a laptop that can suit all your needs, that's lighter and cheaper that you can type on, will you give up that Apple? I think that's so unlikely, my lad, that I accept that bet. OK. Take him down. What have you pressed? Hello? My darling, what have you done? I've chosen the stylish, solid-state Asus 101, which I think can take on the MacBook in more than just looks. It's a PC using the familiar Windows operating system and has the same one gig of DDR RAM as the Mac, yet at just one kilogram, it's half the weight. It only has a single processor compared to Mac's dual core, but it's £250 cheaper. Now, the spec is important when choosing a laptop, but as nearly all laptops come in a whole range of specs, that doesn't necessarily govern what you buy. Indeed, the main difference between the Mac and PC is the operating system. I'm perfectly happy using either, so that's not a big issue for me. The most important part of my laptop is the keyboard. And as I spend hours every day typing, my choice of laptop really does come down to the typing experience. I love the accuracy and feel of my MacBook's keyboard, and if I'm even to consider changing to the Asus, it's going to have to fully satisfy me in that department. So, for our challenge, Jason will have to copy out a paragraph using both laptops while his typing speed and accuracy are measured. He'll be typing in the most extreme circumstances possible, inside a NASA-designed gyroscope subjecting him to 2G. First up, the MacBook. OK, release the brake, chaps. Jason Bradbury. Yes. In three, yes. two, one, start the clock. Go! OK. God made the angels. This is easy. Oh, I'm well, making chaps. a few mistakes. Oh, let him go. Let oh, him go. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, my Lord! Are you still typing? In no way am I typing! It has keys set in metal enclosures, making them both thinner and more durable. The design has also evolved, so now each key is evenly separated by a 3mm gap, making mistyping much less likely, even in extreme circumstances. Stop the clock! I've done it! Oh. You are right? Yeah, I'm fine. They made me do it, the voices in my head. I know, and you were right to do it because it tested that machine to the max. Do you want to just take a moment? Yeah. Because I want to look at your results. OK, 
Okay, Jace, here's your results for the MacBook. Your speed was 25 words a minute, and you made eight mistakes. That's actually pretty good, considering you were nearly vomiting. Right, now it's time for the Asus. Start the clock. How does it feel on your fingers, that keyboard? Terrible. Why terrible? Explain. Because it's too small. The keys are too small, they're too light. There was a whale. I can't get to the right shift key at all. It's a complete chaotic movement. Do you know what? Yeah. I think you're being a bit negative about this because it's not your Mac. And I think you're going to have to go upside no, down. I don't think so. Take them, boys. The... Even though the Asus keys are half a millimetre wider than the Mac, the space between each one is just one millimetre. So horrible! Which is one third of that of the Mac. On top of this, the Mac spacebar is 15 millimetres longer and its mouse mat is 50% wider than the Asus. Pack me out, I'm going to be sick. OK. Immediately. Oh, oh God. Poor thing. It's rubbish. You're you right. You need to check what I've typed. It's rubbish. It's okay. not a Mac preference. It's an honest reaction to it. It is no contender. Ooh, I'm so sorry that you had to Looks witness awful. that. I saw it at close hand. It's as well. nasty, wasn't it? Yeah, it was nasty. But, I mean, the, the, the important result here is that the MacBook was a clear winner. Well, I mean, absolutely. You just didn't like typing on the other one. I at didn't. All. And this is—it's relatively lightweight, especially with the new aluminium housing for the MacBook. Mm. And those keys are brilliant. But it, of course, it's not all about the typing, is it? No, of course it's not. That's You're not... a Mac fan. What do you like about the Mac? Put quite simply, I like the fact that when you switch it on, it switches on instantly and turns off straight away. Yeah. I like some of the applications. I like uh, playing with iPhoto. I find that very sort of. And it's a pleasure experience, isn't it? I yeah. mean, there are some great-looking laptops out there, but it's just got to be said, when you use a machine like this, it's a real pleasure. And, of course, you can't say enough about the, about the, uh, the operating system. It's so secure. You never get any viruses and stuff like that. OK, so, so I you did failed. fail you at failed. the final hurdle to wean him off. I did quite well with, with Last FM. I got you off iTunes. That's the surprise of this week's challenge, I have yeah, to say. it is. That. And that's about all we've got time Hang for on, on this week's show. We've got a great show MacBook. for you next week. No. I'm just trying to say goodnight. Just because I'm friendly doesn't mean you can grab the book. Just share it. Hand it back. Share it. Share it. Does not compute. Just don't be silly, I want to just have a go. Does not compute. Good night. Get back. Get MacBook me. back.